A few days ago, some of the pro members shared this amazing website and asked if I could cover some of the animations, especially the minimap. We have looked at minimap as a concept in an older video, but that was a pretty basic version. Plus, it wasn't responsive. So I decided to build a more advanced and a complete version when I saw the one on this site. This website won the developer award and an honorable mention last week, and it's pretty obvious why. The animations are super clean, but the minimap really stood out. It's put together so well and works seamlessly on mobile devices with a smooth horizontal layout. After spending a few hours recreating it, I was able to build a version that's very close to the original using only JavaScript without any plugins. I would say it has everything a minimap needs. You can navigate it by scrolling and you can also switch images just by clicking on them. The most important part is it works perfectly on mobile devices too. For smaller screens, I implemented custom scroll behavior by leveraging touch start and touch move event listeners to enable smooth horizontal scrolling via swipe gesture. I also created a Next.js version which is available with the pro membership but to keep this video short, I'll focus on the logic using plain javascript. Again, this has everything you need to create perfectly functioning, responsive minimaps. Make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get into the code. Let's start by structuring our layout with a main container that will wrap everything on the page. To avoid an empty look, I am adding a simple navbar with some placeholder text. To match the aesthetic of the original website, I will also include additional text elements using paragraph tags. Next, we need a section to display the image preview. This will dynamically show the image corresponding to the one highlighted in the minimap. Next, let's build the minimap itself. We'll break it down into two components, the indicator which highlights the selected image and the items which represent the thumbnails of all the images. I'll add a div with the class item and insert an image inside it. I'll duplicate this multiple times and update the images. For this demo, we'll be using 15 images in total. And that's the basic structure done. Let's move on to styling now. We'll start by removing any default margins and padding and ensure that borders and padding are included in an element's total width and height. Next, I'm setting the font for the entire document. For the images, I've set them to fully cover their containers while maintaining their aspect ratio and added a smooth opacity transition to show the active item. To prevent any accidental image selection, I've disabled user selection on images. Paragraph text is styled with a slightly bold font weight and anti-aliasing is applied to smooth out the text appearance on different systems. Now let's set up the layout. The main container spans the entire viewport, both in width and height. It has a soft off-white background color and hidden overflow to prevent any scroll bars from appearing. For the navigation bar, I have fixed it to the top of the screen so it stays visible when scrolling. It stretches across the full width of the viewport with some padding for spacing. We'll use Flexbox to space out the elements evenly across the left and right sides. The side information section is positioned vertically in the middle left of the screen with a slight gap between the text elements. I've applied a muted grey color to part of the text to give it a subtle contrast. Next, we'll style the image preview section. This is centered both vertically and horizontally with a fixed width and height to ensure it looks good across different sizes. The image inside the preview is also centered and scales to fit the container without distortion. Now onto the minimap. The minimap is positioned on the right side of the screen, vertically centered. Inside the minimap, there is an indicator that highlights the currently selected image. It's placed on top of the minimap items, ensuring it stands out correctly. The minimap items themselves are stacked vertically with no gaps and each thumbnail is clickable. Finally, for the responsive design, I've added media queries for screens smaller than 900 pixels. On mobile devices, I've disabled default scrolling and touch actions to allow for custom swipe gestures. 
the site info shifts to the top center of the screen to optimize space. The minimap moves from the right side to the bottom of the screen and switches to a horizontal layout for better usability on smaller screens. The indicator and items are adjusted to match the horizontal layout, ensuring everything functions smoothly on mobile devices. And that wraps up this styling. Now let's dive into the JavaScript to bring this minimap to life. First, I'm selecting the key elements from the DOM that we'll be working with. This includes the main container that wraps everything, the minimap items we'll be scrolling through and the indicator that highlights the active image. I'm also selecting all the individual minimap items, the large preview image in the center and all the images inside the minimap. Next, I'm setting up some initial variables. I'm using a flag to check if the screen width is less than or equal to 900 pixels which will help us switch to a horizontal layout for mobile devices. I am also defining an object to store the dimensions of the minimap items, the overall container and the indicator. These values will be updated dynamically based on the screen size. Now I am setting up variables to handle the scrolling behavior and active image tracking. Max translate, current translate and target translate control how far the minimap can move and where it should move next. Is click move flag checks if the movement was triggered by a click while the current image index keeps track of the active image. I am also setting active item opacity to 0.3 to visually highlight the selected item. To handle smooth transitions between positions, I have added a LURP function. LURP stands for linear interpolation. It gradually moves from a start value to an end value based on a factor between 0 and 1. This helps us create smooth natural scrolling effects and animations as the minimap moves or when switching images. Now I am setting up the update dimensions function to manage the responsive behavior of the minimap. This function first checks the screen width to determine whether the minimap should be displayed horizontally or vertically. If the viewport width is 900 pixels or less, it switches to a horizontal layout which is more suitable for mobile devices. In this case, the function calculates the width of each minimap item, the total scrollable width of the minimap container and the width of the indicator. These values are essential to ensure the minimap scrolls smoothly and the indicator correctly highlights the selected item. If the screen is wider than 900 pixels, the layout remains vertical, which works better for a larger screen or desktops. In this scenario, the function calculates the height of each minimap item, the total height of the container and the height of the indicator. This allows the minimap to adjust seamlessly between vertical and horizontal orientations depending on the screen size. After running this function, we update the dimensions object with the new values. Then I am setting max translate which defines the maximum distance the minimap can scroll. Now we will set up the get item in indicator function to figure out which minimap item is currently under the indicator. First we will decide the opacity of all the minimap images to make sure none of the previous selections stay highlighted. Then, we calculate where the indicator starts and ends based on the current scroll position. Next, we will loop through each minimap item to check how much it overlaps with the indicator. The item with the most overlap will be the one we select. Once we have identified it, we'll reduce its opacity to highlight it visually, giving a clear indication of which image is active. Finally, we return the index of the selected item so we can use it to update the main preview image. It's calculated by subtracting the size of the indicator from the total size of the minimap container. This ensures that the indicator doesn't scroll beyond the last item. Next, the update preview image function handles updating the main image preview in the center of the screen. It first checks if the selected image is different from the one currently displayed. If it is, it updates the current image index to the new index, retrieves the source of the selected minimap image and sets it as the source for the preview image. This ensures that the preview always matches the image highlighted in the minimap whether you are scrolling or clicking through the items. 
Now we'll create the animate function to handle the smooth scrolling and transitions of the minimap. First, we'll set a lerp factor which controls how smooth the scrolling feels. If the movement was triggered by a click, we'll use a slightly lower factor for a more controlled animation. Otherwise, for scroll events, we'll use a faster factor to keep the motion fluid. Next, we'll update the current translate by using the lerp function to gradually move from the current position to the target position. This creates that smooth, natural scrolling effect. We'll then check if the current position is close enough to the target position. If it's not, meaning the movement is still happening, we'll apply a transform to the minimap items. If we are in horizontal mode, we'll translate along the x-axis, otherwise, we'll translate vertically along the y-axis. After applying the transform, we'll call getItemInIndicator function to check which item is currently under the indicator, and then we'll update the preview image to match the active item. If the current position reaches the target position, we'll reset the flag, signaling that the movement has finished. Finally, we call request animation frame function to keep the animation running smoothly, creating a continuous loop that updates the minimap's position in real time. Now, we'll set up the event listeners to handle both scroll and touch interactions for the minimap. First, we'll add a wheel event listener to the container to detect when the user scrolls with their mouse. Inside this event, We'll prevent the default scroll behavior to make sure our custom scroll logic takes over. We'll also set the flag to false since this movement is triggered by scrolling, not clicking. Then we'll update the scroll amount using delta y which represents how much the user has scrolled. To control the scroll speed, we'll adjust the delta value and limit the velocity between minus 20 and 20 for smooth scrolling. Finally, we'll update the target translate ensuring it stays within the allowed scroll range by clamping it between 0 and the maximum scroll distance. Next, we handle the touch interactions for mobile devices. We'll start by adding a touch start event to detect when the user begins a swipe. If the layout is horizontal, we'll store the initial touch position along the y-axis. Then, we'll add a touch move event to handle the swipe motion. Again, if we are in horizontal mode, we calculate how far the user has swiped by comparing the current touch position to where they started. This difference, or delta, determines how much we need to scroll. We'll adjust the scroll velocity just like we did with the mouse wheel and update the target translate y value while keeping it within the scroll limits. To ensure smooth interaction and prevent default touch behaviors, like screen bouncing, we'll call prevent default function inside the event. With these event listeners in place, the minimap will respond smoothly to both mouse scrolls and touch swipes, creating a seamless experience across devices. Now, we'll add interactivity to the minimap items and make sure everything stays responsive. First, we'll loop through each minimap item and add a click event listener. When an item is clicked, we'll set the flag to true to indicate that the movement was triggered by a click. Then, we calculate the new target position for the minimap by multiplying the index of the clicked item by the size of the item. We adjust this value to center the selected item within the indicator. After that, we'll clamp target translate to ensure the minimap doesn't scroll beyond its limit, keeping the movement smooth and controlled. Next, we'll add a resize event listener to the window to handle screen size changes. When the window is resized, we'll update the dimensions of the minimap items, container, and indicator to match the new screen size. We'll also recalculate the maximum scroll distance to make sure the minimap doesn't exceed its boundaries. After updating these values, we apply the current translation to reposition the minimap correctly, adjusting the transform based on whether the layout is horizontal or vertical. Finally, to set everything up when the page loads, we'll reduce the opacity of the first minimap image to highlight it as the default selection. We'll also update the preview image to display the first image and call the animate function to kickstart the smooth scrolling and interaction loop. With these steps, the minimap will respond to clicks, adjust automatically on screen resize and initialize correctly when the page loads. And that's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.